<laughs> that, that all of my life choices are based on YouTube metrics. Yeah, much, good. Sure. Somewhere. My guest today, of course, Professor David Kipping, who has the incredible YouTube channel Cool Worlds. If you are watching this and you're not subscribed, um, then you clicked the wrong video on YouTube. <laughs> no. We're going to talk about, I don't know, SETI, YouTube, yeah. outreach. There's something unique in that we're, we're a rare breed. We are astronomers who also like to talk online on YouTube. So yeah. I think we could have an interesting conversation that you won't hear in many of the places. We, we started off always think about science. Yeah. And uh, the original videos, as some of my viewers will remember, were, were shorter. We yeah. did like four or five minutes because I thought that's what YouTube wanted. And it wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do, okay. but it's just what I thought the platform would would promote. And it makes it really hard. It makes it really hard to talk about a research paper in what I mean, people are doing. Oh, this, is, this, is, this is literally what the week is full yeah. of. Is and you're, you're spending like of reference, four yeah. of your five minutes just explaining context. And yeah. You get like one minute for like, and by the way, this is the new result. So it was really hard to make those those like videos hit. Yeah. And um, we we did fairly well, I suppose. We had like I think uh, somewhere between a thousand and four thousand subs. Yeah. I think you started a year and a half or something before I did. Yeah. And by the, when I started, you had like thirty five hundred. It was something in that range. I remember yeah. looking with great admiration at what you had done. I was like, yes, he's, you know, he's somehow doing it. I love it. I was yeah, very yeah. It excited. Was an experiment. That's I've, great I've always thought you, like, you were a smash the whole time. Which is great. That, that means a lot, actually, when the astronomer says that, especially. And then I sort of decided at that point, maybe I'll pack it in, but before I pack it in, I'm just going to like experiment and do a couple of videos that are quite different. And rather than doing what I think YouTube wants me to do, I'm yeah. going to do what I really want to do. Which of course, of course, is always the right thing. And it, it yeah, actually of course works. it is. And yeah. that's kind of like almost a fairy tale experiment in a way, but it, yeah. it's like, maybe that's not always true. But in our case, just going like really deep on some futurism type stuff that yeah. I get really excited about and yeah. geek out on, like really clicks. And uh, that's, that's given me a lot of energy, you know, seeing people respond to that. You guys have been like riding that roller coaster now for the last year incredibly. Yeah, it's been a fun ride, and thank you to everybody who's who's helped us to get to that point. The other thing that's, I don't think, underappreciated about doing outreach uh, on, on YouTube, and just in general, I suppose, is there's a feedback. Some of my research papers have been inspired by either comments or reactions or just um, threads that the videos have started. And it's right. you think, oh, maybe, um, has anyone done this calculation? You do the literature right. search, you find out there's nothing in there. Right. And you think, that would be a kind of cool thing to, to try and figure out. Talk a bit louder because the wind's really. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Uh, it's all an experiment, and I really hope that we can see. We were just saying before, it'd be cool if, like, in five, ten mm. years, maybe less than that, we'll have like way more people uh, talking about their experience online in astronomy, yeah. um, especially for people who don't have, um, a, you know, their family are not academics. Yeah, right. They they maybe don't have advisors who can tell them the sorts of practices and yeah. uh, describe exactly what it's like to go to a conference. I think all of this transparency that we're putting out there is demystifying the experience of it. Astro YouTube can be uh, more diverse than this. Shows I'm still that, waiting yeah. for the silver thing. Yeah, so you've earned that, right? You should have earned I one mean, of the I little know. plaques, I right? Should've. I thought it was 100 I'm checking my notifications like daily because apparently they notify you right. Like when they're ready to give it you. I'm excited to see that. I you you have to make some kind of at least short video for that. I'm <laughs> yeah. excited to see that. I hope it's space themed. But they probably that would be good. You be could cool. take it and get a laser etched though. You could have it. That's great. Good. That's I a like good that. idea. Yeah. You said earlier that my channel is personality driven, and it's not clear to me that yours isn't, in a sense. Well, I think it's it's becoming yeah more so. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Over time, it's, it's and maybe that's the thing. Maybe I maybe it's just that David is the slightly better looking, slightly more English version of me, <laughs> <laughs> and that's just sells. Better. I don't have a beard, so that's where. <laughs> that's, but you could. <laughs> our, channel, our channel couldn't handle that. It yeah. Was just, you know. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe this is your advice to me. Shave this. Gain factor of ten more subs. That, that's the, that was the secret recipe. <laughs> that was you know, it for our channel. <laughs> I'm not freaking out about that yeah. aspect of it, but um, it's definitely something you want to keep in mind if you are 
building a channel mm -hmm. and uh, thinking down the road about monetization. You want to be clear with your department what you're doing. I've always tried to be extremely transparent yeah. to my chair, everything that's going on. Have you, have you felt supported by the university in terms of like, yeah, tenure trajectories and like support as a young faculty member? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I can't complain about that. I think Columbia astronomy is kind of un not unique, but we, we do especially care about uh, outreach in our department. Good. Um, and when I was interviewing at Columbia, I, I told them I was going to do an outreach channel on Good. YouTube. I said, this yeah. is one of the things, if you hire me, I will do. Uh, so just, I want it to be like, you're not going to be surprised yeah. if I show up <laughs> right. and you find me making YouTube videos, right. it's in my application form, that's something I'm going to be doing. Right. So I feel kind of protected in that sense because it's yeah. like, this, this is this what you hired was, me to do. This was the do. agreement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is, and it's not the only thing I'm hired to do, but it's definitely yeah. one of the things I said I was going to do. Do you think the uh, Cool World's empire will grow into other forms of media? Do you have a podcast <laughs> plan? <laughs> Like, we'll well, get, everybody has a got, podcast. Like, do you have a podcast? Uh, we're going for the iPhone like, PewDiePie yeah. type app. Yeah, good. the game. <laughs> There'll be that coming out soon. Good. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a huge empire. There's going to be a music label. Yeah. But really, where's the merch? <laughs> where's the? If you got the YouTube shirt, which I love, you bring, you come to the YouTube day. Yeah, and I actually, got the YouTube shirt. Where's I, the, where's I the put merch? it on my channel. I did experiment with a merch. Okay. And it didn't come out right. <laughs> like it didn't print. Or it just didn't look right. Okay. I, you have to be really careful with merch because you have yeah. to own the images. Yeah. Um, so I like made an image and then it printed and it was just like barely visible what uh, the image was. So yeah. the problem is, as, as you guys probably realize, is that this is not my full time job. <laughs> you have to do punch. the science to talk about it. Like, yeah. You know. <laughs> as the channel grows, maybe eventually I'd love to actually maybe employ somebody to help me out sure. or get an assistant because then we could really do more. It's, yeah. it's a little bit limited when it's just one, one professor <laughs> spending 5% of their time with a tenure case down the road, yeah. uh, trying to travel to conferences, write 10 <laughs> papers a year. It's, it's a lot. Do, do you see this as like a niche thing or do you really think it, it, it should be something that more people are doing? Um, do you think that outreach should be shifting more online than traditional ways of going to, I mean, traditionally you go to schools or give public lectures yeah. and go to science, science festivals. I mean, should like, we be shifting our focus more towards online? So Astronomy on Tap in Seattle, for example, is a real, they've got a really good show. They've been doing a really good job. They've got a great venue. The grads who organize it are amazing. And a great audience, a really faithful audience that comes and fills the place. And that always feels like really effective outreach to yeah. me. It's not the end all kind of outreach, right? We fill the place, we could get a bigger venue, we'd fill that too. Um, but we also know that we fill it with a bunch of like tech focused people who had a certain background, who already liked astronomy, and who probably are already subscribers to Sky and Telescope. Like, yeah. you know, like so we're you're reaching to the choir. Yeah, yeah. And it's a yeah. good choir to preach to. Yeah, yeah. And and that is great outreach to do. Um, and there's at least opportunity space in the internet that you could reach new people. Yeah, you know? I agree. I, I mean, that was always what uh, appealed to me about going online is that yeah. how much investment is it to go to an hour public lecture at our department at Columbia? It's a lot. Yeah. You have to get a babysitter. You have to <laughs> yep. drag yourself. You have to get changed out of your pajamas. You have to get out of bed. <laughs> an online video has none of that. You just it's going to be blown off here, but you can <laughs> you can just yeah open your phone. I, yeah, I mean the one thing I don't do is the vlogging thing. Right. And I've sometimes wished I did because um, you, I really admire the fact that there's an opportunity here for people to see yeah. how science actually happens, like on the ground floor in the trenches. Yeah. And we, we're presenting often the finished product of, of, right. of all that effort. Um, and we've sometimes experimented, we did one with the Proxima, we were talking about this earlier, the yeah. Proxima Hum, and I did some videos talking about um, my experiences of like thinking I'd found the yeah. transiting planet and then it turned out it wasn't real yeah. and that, that surge of excitement and then you know disappointment when it didn't turn out to be real. I think, I think that's a great story. I, I love those people. And the thing that I've always wanted to show is like impossible. When you've got a good idea or when you're having a conversation with somebody at a meeting, there's this like magic moment where you realize like, oh my God, this is actually a really good idea. We should write this up as a paper. And then yeah. spoiler, the vast majority of those don't actually become papers because yeah, we're yeah. too busy with our day jobs. But, but that moment of like creation, yeah, like where a new idea is really born. Yeah, I mean that um, happens all around the corridors. Right. Like that's right. That's why I brought my camera to the AAS three yeah. years ago. We had it in the techno signatures. I had a little moment. That, you know, the, we were both in that yeah. techno signature session. Yeah. It's one of our common research interests. Is, right. is this is this field? 
and uh, there was this fantastic book taught by Jason. You know, he has this wave of colonization. Yeah. You and asked the, the question you asked was my question yeah. too. And then we yes. started talking afterwards. Okay, good. And uh, maybe yeah, Adam's interested in like building that into the model. So good. this is yeah, this is how ideas happen. It's by um, having people in the audience like push you in different ways and yeah. it helps you diffuse different ideas together and come up with something new. So yeah. it's it's great that you're able to capture some of that. Do you have one uh, instance of that that's particularly memorable where you really thought like yeah. Yeah, I am throwing you right on the spot there's great. no it's, prep for this it's perfect it's like, um, think immediately of a good story good I will um, <laughs> okay. when I was a postdoc um, I had like the first week I was trying to distill like I've written this fellowship application I've said I'm going to do this thing what is it what is the goal like I was having like this internal crisis of what am I trying to measure and I made some like sticky note of like Thing that has previously been measured, thing that I'm going to measure, and it was like that's okay. what I want to do. And, and like one I, of those XEKD comics. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. There was like this moment, like in year two of the postdoc, where I was like, oh my god, I actually can make that plot. Yeah. The thing that I set out to do because I was super in the weeds and applying for jobs, and you'd lost track of the big picture. Yeah. It was like this incredible like satisfaction, like oh, oh my god, it actually worked. <laughs> yeah, and that you actually like, sometimes when you're in the weeds, you don't. It feels like sometimes you're not achieving anything. Yeah, so that's to right. look back and see. That's right. I'd yeah. done two papers on this project and I had forgotten what the whole point was. Yeah. I, I, I was yeah. hoping you'd tell me that you'd found a techno signature once. And, <laughs> but maybe it's top secret. I think Jim Jim has something in his flare data. There's some like prime number flare that's sequence right. that you've detected that's that right. we're waiting to hear about. Yeah. Yeah. I actually really liked your talk of talking about all the different ways it's such a broad thing. Yeah. And like the, yeah, it's 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 like your creativity, talking about creativity on YouTube, that's where creativity can really run wild because yes. who, you're really trying to put yourself in the mindset of another civilization which has nothing to do with our civilization. Yeah. What are all the possible ways which something could look non-natural? And it's, it's an endless list and yet yeah. there's so few of us uh, yeah. thinking about it that it's, it, we're, I really appreciate your point that we, there's a desperate need in a way for um, astronomers to invest some small fraction of their time. If yeah. everybody did that, we'd probably have some some really unique ideas coming to the fore of this. It's an endless list. I think that's the right analysis. Are you discouraged by that? Does that discourage you? I mean, mm. it might be discouraging to the odds of finding something, but are you discouraged about it in terms of a practice? I guess it's frustrating that you can never have an upper limit, right? <laughs> you can never say, yeah. because I didn't see this particular techno signature, therefore intelligence is rare right you'll never be able to make that statement right and that that is a little bit frustrating because certainly when we talk about doing planet detection rates and yeah. with flare detection rates you know even if you don't see something there's an interesting paper to be written right that upper limit still meaningful yeah <laughs> and it's a little bit frustrating that it just means there aren't aliens like David <laughs> yeah all, all you can say is that nobody thought of exact doing the exact thing that I particularly thought of an Today. alien might do <laughs> yeah <laughs> On, on the other hand, the the field is kind of ridiculous because you're asking probably the grandest question yeah. you could possibly, at least in my opinion. Yeah. So, how can, uh, so how why can not work on it? That? Why yeah. not work on it? Yeah. Where Where is this whole journey going? What Where do we go once we've started detecting biosignatures on a regular basis? Yeah. I mean, where, what's the future of the field after that point? Well, it's going to be attempting communication. It's going to be yeah. trying to characterize whether there's other civilizations out there for sure and maybe even traveling to those places. So that's why I certainly enjoy putting some time into it and I know yeah. uh, you get a big kick out of it as, as well so yeah. um, I, d I think it's a great Google 10% type thing to do. Isn't There's it? so many areas in science where a young student might say like uh, I, I want to make this new plot and you say like well okay actually this was made 30 years ago you're, you're super behind it. For a lot of these technical research things it's not it's not there and there's a huge opportunity to do new low-hanging fruit kinds of things with a small fraction of your time yeah. it's really it's really well positioned especially for young people i yeah. think in the field it, it's it can be at some points high risk if you're going up for your tenure case or mm. you're on the faculty job market and your last five papers were all seti papers because unfortunately there is still a stigma in certain departments about this subject area it might not it, you, I can understand why someone might be reluctant to do that with yeah. their time. Yeah. But when you're um, more junior in your career, or, or certainly more past tenure, <laughs> more senior in your career, you can afford to take more risks. And uh, especially when you're junior, that's obviously something that would really excite you about yeah. getting into the field. And it would teach you how to make the sorts of calculations that we use in all types of astrophysics all the time. Right. It's just that you're applying it to this particular problem. So I think it can really be an inspirational subject to get you hooked into 
modeling, observational astronomy, thinking about the galaxy, thinking about the universe, and um, the, the, you know, it'd be great to see maybe REU programs geared around SETI and oh, stuff wow. like this in the that's future. that's a great idea. Yeah. SETI REU. I think, I think that would be, be a, a really fun experiment to do. That's, okay. David, thanks for taking the time. My man. pleasure, thank you for having me on. Yeah. And, uh, I, this, by the way, this is my first time appearing on the blog, and I have always wanted to be on the vlog and I'm finally on the vlog so thank you Jim for having me on. We are making dreams come true here. This is a big dream for me, thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've made it man. Yeah, this is it. Now, a peak to my career at this point, this is it. <laughs>